What's up, YouTube, and welcome to Codename Scream. I am that horror guy. And I'm Mel. And please make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications for all things horror. Uh, welcome to another uh, part of our classic series, or flashback series, whatever you want to call it. You know, we're just going to kind of go with it, right? Um, got another installment here for you guys. What are we doing today? John Carpenter's They Live. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> released on November 4th, 1988. Written and directed by our beloved John Carpenter. Yes. Produced by Larry Franco. And sometimes I bring up who the music was by. Sometimes I don't. But this time I had to because it's John Carpenter and Alan Hoer. Yeah. So the, the Halloween crew is back. Yes. And it was based on 8 o'clock in the morning by Ray Nelson. All right. So we're going to discuss the budget and box office because we actually have both this round, yeah. which was nice. <laughs> I actually have something to do for once. <laughs> so our budget was $3 million, raked in a whole $13 million at the box office. And if you adjusted that for 2021 inflation, you'd be at about $29 million. So not terrible, you know, yeah. all things considered. Mm -hmm. um, it still made its money back and then some. That's yeah. all that matters, really. Um, but what did the uh, critics and audience think? Uh, on the higher side this time, compared yeah, to what we so. say, see, a uh, critic score of 85%, audience of 79 So, not bad at all. Yeah, I have not <laughs> met a single person that doesn't like this movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, we're going to provide a link in the description below for you guys to stream this online. Um, if you own it, which you should, watch it there as well. Um, I'm just going to give a brief synopsis on this as I do, and we'll move forward from there and kind of just discuss it a little bit more. Broadcast. That's what the word I was looking Broadcast. for. Broadcast. There that's what I was looking for. I was trying to help you, but I was like, I don't know what word he's looking Broadcast for. Broadcast is the word <laughs> I was looking for. All right, let's try that again. Yeah. So Rowdy Roddy Piper portrays Nada, nothing, just a homeless guy and uh, lives in a little shanty town. And uh, we start off on a night where he's watching a broadcast of this like hacker guy that's saying they're trying to control um, everybody through television waves. People are complaining of headaches when they're watching this, so forth. That's where we start off. Um, kind of an interesting start and mm -hmm. gets into the more political side of things from here. Um, there is a church congregation meeting, a, a congregation in a church. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, I saw what I did there. And um, <laughs> they're all just discussing about that, and they've got these boxes of glasses and whatnot, and uh, they uh, preacher sees uh, Nada watching in on them. So police come in the next day, raid the church, and take everything away. Um, he ends up with some of these glasses and walks away and decides to pop on a pair and everything goes black and white. Yeah. Color, there's no more. It's like watching that movie Pleasantville all over again. <laughs> um, but horror. And uh, he notices that certain people have like a skull face, if you would, kind of uh, resemble aliens. Yeah. And there's subliminal messaging in all the ads and the television and screen. Everything. Everywhere, you know, uh, consume, conform, obey, you know, you name it, it it's there. And uh, he's going through the store and sees this. Um, one of them starts to make a call towards the other ones. Then we get to the bank scene, which is the best scene of the whole yeah. movie. You know, it's like... Well, I'll argue you that. Oh, we'll okay. Get, we'll we'll, we'll come there. back to that point. But uh, it's very Duke Nukem-esque. You know, mm -hmm. this character, you know, obviously Duke Nukem was built off that character yeah, to some sure. degree. But, you know, you get the the, the infamous, um, I'm here to chew bubblegum and kick some ass. I'm all out of bubblegum. And then just... <laughs> Starts opening fire on the bank, takes a hostage with him. And uh, then he's trying to convince everybody about, you know, you got to put these glasses on. You got to see what I'm seeing. Uh, the hostage knocks him out, calls police on him. He goes to the leader of the little shanty town, tries to get him to do it. He thinks he's a murderer. Yeah. No one wants to believe this poor guy. Yeah. And uh, then he, uh, after the little scuffle they have, which was awesome, uh, comes to find, oh, no, actually, I see what you're talking about now. We're going to go ahead and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so things are a little uh, a little odd around here. <laughs> Turns out, yeah, aliens are trying to use Earth's global warming um, to make their more like their planet, and uh, they're also appointing humans um, to go with them and help them get this message along the way. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but you can see them and they're formed through these glasses. And yeah, yeah. Uh, 
kind of go from there. Um, I'm gonna let you guys watch the rest of it from there because the ending portion is mm -hmm. pretty freaking awesome. Yep. But I don't want to spoil too much on this yeah. one, to be honest. Um, this is one of those ones you kind of have to watch, and that's why I'm just cutting it here. Because oh yeah, it would totally spoil the ending. Yeah, the ending yeah, and yeah. I'm not I'm not spoiling that, and because the ending is awesome. So we're gonna leave it there for you guys to peruse at your own uh, viewing time, and we have a lot of facts and a lot of things to talk about apparently. Yeah. So let's just go ahead and start from there. What did you think of this movie? Um, awesome. <laughs> like the concept is just so cool, and the fact that they let this movie be released in the time that it was released kind of right. surprised me mm -hmm. um that they're like yeah this is fine you know because that was like during the time of like the satanic panic yeah like everyone was panicked about everything so i'm surprised that this didn't start a whole like war with the government when oh this came yeah out because that it's you know, it's not that far from the truth. No, nope. and I will say, uh, unlike uh, certain films, <coughs> Serbian film, um, this is how you do a, a government film, you know, yeah. um, stabbing back at the man. This is how you do it. Yeah. Just saying. Um, but continue. Yeah, so I thought, that, A, the concept was genius. Um, the storyline was so solid throughout the whole thing. The acting was great. I loved my favorite part of the whole movie that I thought was the greatest scene was the fight scene. <laughs> because it lasted Forever. so long. Yeah. It's like, I think it's like, it is e either the longest or one of the longest fight scenes in a movie. I believe um, it. Um, but it wasn't boring. No. Cause it just like watching these dudes pummel each other was mm -hmm. like the most interesting thing. Um, but yeah, I love the movie f frankly for the concept because I am all in on that. Like, oh, yeah. I believe that whether, you know, I'm not going to say it's aliens, but like, the the concept of like mind control is like such a real thing and so many people are so blind to it mm -hmm. that um that's why i love this like i was just this is a total side step but we do that sometimes here um especially like the older generation like are so susceptible to like because our our generation is where we started to get smart yeah you know with realizing these things but like the other day, I was try telling my mom about MK Ultra because my mom's like <laughs> older, and um, she's like, "That wasn't a real thing. The government would do that." And it's like they, they did. They did. You know, it's a thing that happened. So, like the fact that this is just kind of like rubbing that back into the government's face was mm -hmm. just like so awesome to me. Um, but besides that, I just thought the movie was great. Like the acting in it is good. Mm -hmm. Um, Roddy Piper's just so cool. Roddy Piper. He's like the coolest person <laughs> ever. Um, and it's just, it's such a simple concept that they just made into such a great movie. So I love it. Absolutely. And I did want to piggyback for 10 seconds on that when you were like, oh, I showed my mom and I thought you were going to say, I showed my mom MK Ultra. I'm like, I love that periphery song. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was a better story, you know, than what I thought it was going to be, but got a little excited for a moment there. <laughs> we love periphery. We love periphery, so, um, yeah, I love this, obviously. John Carpenter, can't go wrong in my eyes. Everything Is there anything talk. John Carpenter you don't like? No, Maybe actually. He, uh, he made my favorite vampire film of all yeah. time, you know, he spearheaded my favorite slasher series of all time like he pretty much anything he touches is gold in my yeah. opinion um and always will be um casting on this killer roddy piper awesome the fact that we had a you know as long of a fight scene as we did should have been expected with roddy piper to yeah. be honest so um but love it and yeah that bank scene is hilarious yeah that line that was great but and like and, um i mentioned that with duke nukem there you know back in the game back in the day that was his line mm -hmm. so you know it gave us duke nukem even. yeah that was one of my favorite games growing up yeah. um but yeah i love the concept of subliminal messaging because in that period of time that was a huge thing yeah you know, look at um judas priest ozzy osbourne albums you know people were playing them backwards on their record players um, nowadays, we're going to start to understand how that's like. Vinyl's making a comeback, and yeah. people are enjoying that. And we might get to get another round of some subliminal messaging. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the time period for this, that that was a very prominent thing. People were scared of that, and scared that what are you being told that you're you know yep. what are you being t really told when you're being told something, and what could be behind the scenes. Um, so I loved that. Do you ever just think about that when you're like watching a commercial? 
Mm -hmm. I think about that kind of stuff all the time. Like, what is in here? That What is this actually telling me to do right now? <laughs> when I was uh, uh, a teenager and I saw this movie for the first time, I may or may not have sat with my sunglasses on watching TV with my dad. <laughs> just hoping, hoping. It, it lasted one 30-minute run of, you know, the local news. And I was like, this is lame. This is bullshit. <laughs> and then you got a headache from watching yeah, and my head your sunglasses. Yeah, it was the 9 o'clock news, so I went to bed right after because my head hurt a little <laughs> bit. But, you know, it was it was worth it for the time being. My dad was just, he thought I was doing the whole, like, my sunglasses at night thing. And I'm like, no. You know, accurate to the time piece, but no. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but, yeah, I love that entire concept. And... You know, and it still stands to the yeah. day. Like, you know, very few movies in that time period can actually, like, hold substance right. to their, you know, base material. And this is one of those. That yeah. It, it, it could still stand today. And, yeah, it's just awesome. Phenomenal film. Well, it's like a lot of movies, like, in this time period from, you know, I'd say... 80, even late 70s to like late 80s that have any political meaning to it mm -hmm. are very dated. Yes. Because the subject matter has to do with something that was going on at that time. Um, but this, just like even today, like that's one of the political matters that like you still, I still think about it all the time. Oh yeah. So. No, I, was, I was really excited to get to revisit this one again. So. Yeah. Um, but, so, what do we got some fun facts on this one? Well, this movie was shot in Los Angeles, took eight weeks to shoot. Uh, the film's original release date was October 21st, but it got pushed back to uh, avoid a competition with Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Yep. Smart move. Yeah, very smart move. Because you would have not have won against that. There's mm, no way. No. Uh, it did debut at number one, which if they hadn't moved it, it wouldn't have. It would not have. Uh, and spent two weeks in the top ten, grossed $4.8 in the box office opening weekend. So that's a decent opening weekend, uh, especially during that time. So uh, kudos to that. Because right. Because there are not many movies that were getting that many. But it was John Carpenter. So yeah. I think people were just going to see it because it was John Carpenter. Oh, yeah. Uh, the fight scene was only supposed to last for 20 seconds. Oh, yeah, you can't. It was supposed to be a 20 second fight scene, but Roddy Piper and Keith David decided to fight for real. Um, they only faked the blows to the face and the groin. Um, <laughs> everything else was them actually fighting. And it's so funny, like, there's a few face shots you can tell are totally fake. Oh, yeah. Um, but other than that, they were actually punching each other. Uh, and John Carpenter was so impressed with the fight scene, uh, he left the whole thing in. He was just he like, we're just going to leave this whole thing in because these two dudes fighting is the most entertaining part of this whole movie. Oh, yeah. um, they actually rehearsed the fight uh, in the backyard of Carpenter's office um, three weeks prior to filming. So I think that would have been a funny sight. To oh, yeah. Fun. Just look out, watch them pummeling each other. Yeah. And... Yeah. It, too bad, like smartphones weren't a thing then because <laughs> this movie would have gotten so much more like people going to see it if they would have he would have just been like posting that to instagram like mm -hmm. these two dudes fighting what are these guys, the, what are they what doing? Are these guys? <laughs> this is the movie it's just them fighting uh the homeless people in the movie were real which i thought was pretty cool okay. john carpenter brought them in onto the film uh paid them in cash and fed them right on so another reason we love john carpenter oh yeah uh, John Carpenter cast Roddy Piper after seeing him in WrestleMania. Why did I say WrestleMania? WrestleMania. 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 Let's try that again. WrestleMania 3. <laughs> You're going to leave this in. Oh, I totally am. <laughs> John Carpenter cast Roddy Piper after seeing him in WrestleMania 3 in 1987, even though the role was originally written for Kurt Russell. Yeah, I did read that somewhere. Uh, after 1982's The Thing, he wrote the part of Frank just for Keith David. Mm -hmm. But imagine being Kurt Russell and being beat out by Roddy Piper. Oh, God. Being like so, he probably still has it out. I'm really glad he didn't put Kurt Russell in there because then it would have been like what we're seeing with like you know people always give uh, like Tim Burton and Quentin Tarantino and Rob yeah. Zombie crap for yeah. the whole you just cast the same people I'm really glad he yeah. chose against and that. it would have been a very Kurt Russell movie oh like, yeah I can almost picture in my head what that would be like and it wouldn't have nearly it would have been same. Snake Plissken yeah. <laughs> fighting Roddy Piper right right <laughs> um it cost twelve thousand dollars to have the train roll by in the opening shot uh they messed it up the first time so they had to do it again oh, 
Or they could have, you know, just come to our studio and you yeah, can get one of those for free. Yeah, they could have just gone out there because we have trains go by all the time. That's why these videos are so chopped and yep. skewered. It's not us messing up, it's the train rolling by. Sometimes it's us. Sometimes it's us. Uh, this was the seventh and last collaboration between John Carpenter and Alan Howarth. Yep. Which they should have worked together forever and ever and all eternity yep. because it... Phenomenal duo. genius together. Yeah. Uh, but that's all I got for fun facts. Interesting. Well, I mean, we did go shopping this weekend. I did find some really cool stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, I bought these. Oh, no. Yeah, you know, you know, I checked these out and, you know. You didn't have to buy me anything. Yeah, I thought, you know. <laughs> that's weird. Yeah. Yep. Don't like this. Yeah, I don't either. But uh, what did you guys think of the movie? Uh, sound off in the comments below. Um, sound off in Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you name it. Um, you know, tell us what you thought about it. Clearly these are working. Man. Oh. Oh, boy. I, we gotta go. Yeah, we gotta get out of here. So with that being said, scare you later, YouTube.